Hey guys, welcome to another video tutorial with me. In today's video, this is part four to our flower color guide series. That's based off this book we are using as a reference to create a bunch of flowers every week so that at the end of the series, we can paint them all together and create a pretty bouquet. If you have missed the previous videos, let me quickly show you what we did. The first one we did was the butterfly ranunculus where we focused on getting some nice organic shapes for our, our floral petals. This was a Sunday Live where we did the ranunculus and larkspur, but this might not be included in the final. And then this was the autumn anemone that we painted together, also from the book. And then last but not least, we finished off with the dahlia. And today we are doing the Fritillaria. So really quickly for my supplies, I've got the flower color guide book. I am using a combination of the Princeton Neptune number eight, number six, and I'm also going to be keeping handy the number one from the Zen Art Supplies miniature collection, just because they've got some tinier details happening in this flower. And then for colors, I'm using my, um, I was gonna say Princeton. I'm using my White Knights set of 36. I've got water ready. I've got my paper towel handy on here. And as per usual, everything I am using here in supplies is listed in the description below. So feel free to check out those links. Just realized I didn't mention what paper I'm using. I am using my Paul Rubens sketchbook, watercolor sketchbook. So we're gonna start off by me uh, quickly showing you on a practice sheet the strokes involved um, to create our pretty flower. So I'm gonna start off with using the number uh, one round, the miniature, and then I'm keeping the number six handy because we're gonna use last week's leftover paint that I also have on my palette. And then we'll use a bit of basic green to get those tiny little bud-like elements at the top and then the mature flowers and then the stem. Well, the stem will be in the final because we've done so many stems at this point. I don't think you guys need any more practice for stems or isolation, stem isolations. Okay, so here we go. I've got some green. And I'm going to start off by just getting some more water to activate this green. I'm going to start off by creating the very top little guys over there. Let me just move this over. And so they're like tiny little buds. So I'm just doing, using the top half of my brush to kind of create these cute little buds. I'm leaving a little bit of white space. So I've started out light at the top. And then as I'm going lower, I'm going to create, I'm gonna paint them in a slightly darker, more prominent green. And Again, just using my brush to create these shapes that are like oval-ish almost. And then we want the tiniest strokes at the very, very top. Getting more green to kind of insert in these darker areas here. If you mess up, just add another little blob there like I did. And that's fine. So now once that's done, I'm gonna take my number six and get some of the purple or the wine color that we mixed. Get a little bit more red in it. And then we're just gonna do tiny little round bits. First, we'll start off with doing some strokes just like in the green. Maybe if your green is still damp, add a little bit of that purple in it as well. Now this one dried off quickly, so what I'm doing is just taking this brush of green and kind of blending it in. Same thing with the next one. And then you've got some nice little purple along mixed in with that green. And then as we go lower, let me just turn this over so it's easier for me to paint. We are doing these little cups for our flowers, just like that. So I'm not going to do a lot of overlapping like these guys have. And I'm just doing it very roughly and loosely all around. 
Maybe even take a little bit of slightly different purple, a darker purple maybe, and add that in there. And this way you're getting a variety of different hues and colors, but really, which really helps with making things stand out, foreground, background, that sort of thing. All right, and let me just do one more. Phase it out with a lighter version of that. Perfect, and now back to the number one, and we are going to use the green to kind of have this all blend in or meet together. So very lightly with the tip of my brush, I am just bringing it all in. And then we can use the number eight for the stem because we need like a nice thick area for the stem. And this is a very, very light green that I have here. I need more green on there. But this is just the practice, so something as thick as that. And then the leaves are simple. You're just literally just using the tip of your brush, pressing, bring it back, bringing it back in to the stem. That's the idea. All right, so let's get on to doing our actual version of this. All right, so here we go. So using my number one, I'm gonna get some green and we're going to start off with doing the buds just like we did in the practice. And so this time I think I'll make it this way. So I'm going to start the tiny little buds. What I'm doing is I'm starting the ones that are lower and then the ones that are higher. Once this is watered down a bit, I will dip the tip of my brush in water and then just do a couple at the top. just like that. So now watered down versions of these more at the bottom as well, slightly bigger. And then we'll take some of that purple and add it into the tips of these buds and maybe some on the side as well. And then we're slowly, gradually going into this purple, right? So adding these cute little strokes. Now I know I said like little bell versions of these flowers peeking underneath. What you can also do is just do your regular strokes and just kind of have these little dabs of color happening. So this is one flower that's kind of facing upward. That's the one right there. And I'm pushing all the color down to the bottom. And again, let's do a couple more on this side. And then you can also take in some additional color from the side and just kind of add it, dab it into certain areas of your, your flowers. Again, we're looking for that nice dimensional look, adding more, um, filling it up, fluffing it up, and also adding more um, dimension to your composition or your strand of flowers. This is the last one. Fabulous. Now I'm just going to go back, get my green. And I'm going to get the green from the, uh, I'm going to get more of the green that is like slightly darker, mix it in with my olive to get like this bright green sort of color. And here we go. We are going to do the stem first, unlike the first version of this. And I'm doing it like that. painting this in at this point because it's such a tiny 
brush and I'm so used to using just the tip to sort of graze over the sheet just so I don't get thick lines that now I'm kind of painting having to paint my my stem in. And what I'm also going to do at this point is I've noticed some areas of the stem has a little bit of that purple mauve color in it so I'm just kind of adding that in there as well. Perfect. Now, getting more of that green, we're sort of attaching it to our stem. And they've got these cute little stems for these that kind of just go outward that way. And that's perfect. Now at this point, if you feel like you need to add a couple more flowers, this is where you add them. And I think I would like to add some. So I'm just going to add a couple more of them, maybe overlapping on these guys a little bit. So it looks fuller. Some peeking out. Some kind of looking like they're maybe in the back of the other flowers that we've painted. <clears throat> and then one just on this side just so it's kind of slightly symmetrical and then going in with the brush for green we're getting some green and attaching And now these guys have a little bit of yellow so if you want to add just a tad bit of yellow to the centers or to the bottoms of these you can so I'm just gonna add it because most of them are kind of facing downward I'm just gonna do that this one was facing upward so I just added it right there just a little bit of yellow here and there filling the sky in and that's that for that. So now we are moving on to doing the leaves. So for the leaves I'm using my number 8 and I'm going to get the regular green because the leaves are considerably darker. Mixing it with whatever leftover color I have of green. Put this down so it's not in the way. And then we're going in and doing our leaves. So what I'm doing is, I'm going to explain this as I am painting this to you. I'm getting the tip of my brush, lightly grazing, pressing down, going back to the tip of my brush and then lightly attaching to the stem. Then I'm just naturally adding a couple of dabs of green in and around the leaf so that it dries up darker in those areas. And the nice thing about these leaves are it is long, it kind of really helps you practice your, your strokes and really kind of get used to your brushes as well. And so again, a great way to practice getting accustomed to your brush and just also creating something super pretty. And notice the leaves. When you're looking at these when the, looking at the image as a, uh, for a reference, notice how the shapes of the leaves are. They're so organic. They're so fun and organic, not stiff and, yeah, stiff and, can't quite get another word for it right now. But um, that's what we want. And this helps us in our loose watercolor journey. Just adding some darker hues of green here and there. Again, really makes things pop. And then that's it. You can sort of decide how many leaves you want, if you want a whole bunch of leaves or not. I'm going to leave it at this one. And then I'll do one more. And you guys can check that 
out on Instagram. I will definitely be posting that real-time video there. And that's that, guys. So, again, hope you guys enjoyed this video. And hope you guys enjoyed the previous videos building up to this. Let me know in the comments what you thought. And when you do end up doing this, please do tag me in your work. Uh, when you post on Instagram and Facebook, my handles are mentioned below. And if you like this video, please hit the like button. Please consider subscribing as uh, your support really does help me grow. Not only my channel, but also keeps me inspired to create more fun videos for you guys. Thanks so much for watching, guys, and we'll chat soon. Bye.